mean what? Sorry? That sculpture on top of the movie theater. This sculpture is a friend of mine. What do you think? Artwork? It's art, you know, it's, you know. Stairwell? Spiral. It's simple, but yet very complex. I always say this, but the idea that exists in your mind suddenly becomes materialized and there's nothing more thrilling. The most rewarding thing is to start a project with the most tentative idea, like a couple of chicken scratches, and then before you know it, you have this 5,000 pound rotating on the roof. It's really one of the best projects you could have. What started the process is the fact that the building exists and it has an extraordinary facade in that it's unencumbered and it's a perfect place for doing a billboard. So the first thing that happened is Molly took some photographs of the building itself. We did some studies thinking about what could be on the billboard and it sort of started as something as, as it always does, as tentative and trivial as this piece of paper where we decided we would do a series of announcements on the side of the building. Then we went on to what would make it unique and we were thinking about the marquee itself, which at the moment is rather unattractive. And something that I've always held in my mind was this famous image by Tatlin, this absurd monument to the Third International. There was a giant sort of Eiffel Tower-like structure. And we thought, well, that would be nice on the marquee. But this was a little hard to make. <laughs> so we did an intensely reduced version of it which turned out to be something that looked like this. We did a lot of different studies because a lot of those studies had to do with the peculiarities of what happens when lines intersect. And then we got to the interior itself and our idea for the interior is to keep it very simple, to have the same idea about the mutability or changeability of the walls. And so these are the elements we're now playing with and juggling with and uh, I didn't give anybody else a chance to say anything. But you can make a comment. Are you talking about that sculpture up there, the colorful one? It's kinetic. And it moves? Oh, it moves. It moves? Does it turn? Does it light up to different... Oh, oh. The area is Chelsea. The building was built in the mid-60s as part of a much larger complex. It was built by the Garment Workers Union as part of their cooperative housing project, which stretches from 23rd to 29th Street. In the 40-some years that it existed, it's had several incarnations as a single theater, three screens. It was a legitimate theater at one time with actually a stage where we're standing right now. When we took the theater over, it had been occupied for approximately a dozen years by the Clearview Cinemas, which owns many theaters around the city. I'm the project architect, and I'm working with Milton Glazer, who's the designer of the project. At the moment, we're in the midst of reconstructing it. Before we got the theater, SVA didn't have a legitimate place to show movies, to have important guest lecturers come in and speak to large numbers of students. So we've always needed some kind of a facility. We've looked for years. Finally, this one came up. And this one turns out to be actually a lot larger than we thought it would be. 
Uh, it's now two theaters rather than one. Uh, we have a, a lobby we've got to completely reconfigure. We have to figure out what we want to do with the marquee. We have to figure out what we want to do with the side of the building. This became a much bigger project. Milton Glaser has been involved in all aspects of design. He calls himself a designer because it gives him a wide scope within which to work. It's not a confining term. There are certain iconic things that he's done that people are all familiar with. For example, I Heart New York. Perhaps his best known poster is the rainbow poster for Bob Dylan. Redesigned actually for Juilliard. He designed restaurants, completely rebranded the institutions. His work is ubiquitous. And we see it in a lot of different ways, in a lot of different places. He's the best designer in America. And I always held in my mind this memory of a very famous piece of sculpture, Tatlin's memorial to the Third International. And it existed only as an enormous model, and I've only seen it reproduced in hundreds of books about constructivist ideas. It was a giant structure, actually twice the height of the Eiffel Tower. And within it were contained office buildings that rotated and ramps that cars could go up to. Anyhow, it was one of these things that was doomed from the beginning. But I thought because it was uh, so firmly fixed in my and, and other minds as an icon of modernism itself, a variation of that idea would be very interesting, particularly because it was intended to be a kinetic sculpture. The uh, real challenge in building the maquette of the sculpture that will be installed on the roof of the Visual Arts Theater were the two cylinders. The two revolving cylinders turn in different directions at different speeds. So the gearing had to be designed in such a way to be able to accomplish that. And that made this kind of a difficult model to build. My name is Kevin O'Callaghan. Um, I'm the 3D design chair at the School of Visual Arts. And I'm also responsible for the fabrication of all the art pieces of this project. Next week, myself and the students will be installing a model on the marquee of the theater. several elements that determined what the theater was going to be used for. One is the fact that it is a 150 feet of unencumbered space that faces directly on 23rd Street without a window interfering with that space. And it seemed like it would be a marvelous display, preferably something that had cultural interests rather than a billboard advertising something. There's almost no access to an area that size. So what I proposed was a series of printouts that cover the entire facade. So what you have is one of the few really enormous billboards in the city at eye level. My name is Patrick Kaler from Seal Fiberglass. I came to show you the plans and how the sculpture was fabricated, where you can see the rotators and the structural integrity required to maintain stability in all wind conditions. The rotating motors and the assemblies that we use in here are designed to rotate forever. You ready to turn it on? 
<laughs> wow. Absolutely gorgeous. One of a kind, right? One of a kind. It is pretty it, exciting, it's just you know? Like, it's just like the model. It's amazing. It's absolutely just look, amazing. Just a little heavier. Absolutely just a little, amazing. Just a what little a heavier. job. <laughs> what a job. <laughs> going to be two stories tall, 10 feet in diameter, to get a kinetic sculpture of that size to turn smoothly and to operate correctly in all seasonal conditions is going to be a real challenge. Kevin, you ready? I absolutely can't wait. I've been waiting a long time to see you, this spin. You, I, I, I can tell, I can tell. You're very anxious. Hit it. Uh, spin it. Unbelievable. Good stuff. What I did was a variation of the idea of Tatlin to make an art historical reference. Some people may not see the relationships, others may, particularly if I tell them that's what I started with. Roughly the idea of whatever designing I'm doing is uh, to create a place that looks celebratory and inviting and doesn't depart too much from the idea of conventional theater. What we're going to do on the interior reflects what we're doing on the exterior. The wall behind me is made of fiberglass and finished with automobile paint. And then on top of that, there are about two million dots that were applied by hand. My name is Sue Walsh, and I was the lead designer with Milton Glaser, working on this project for the SVA Theater. Before the renovation started, this space looked like a very commercial movie theater. It was designed most recently in the early 90s, but that design incorporated a lot of nostalgia from 1950s. It was not really an inspiration, it was just a place for us to start from and essentially just move away. At Milton's studio, the process doesn't really start with clear intentions sometimes, and that's part of what makes it so great to work with him. We had done a few generic renderings and, and mock-ups of the lobby, but it felt very sparse and not very interesting. Once we saw photographs of the demolition and we came to the site, we saw this amazing waffle ceiling revealed. The space grew 50% vertically. All this raw concrete and beautiful rough forms revealed, and Milton just started cutting pieces of paper out and pasting it on a printout of the space being demoed. If you would look at that piece of paper and you look at this space now, you will sort of see such a clear beginning of vision of modular shapes and very contrasting materials has really been executed almost to what he wanted in the beginning. We felt it would make this feel like nothing else in New York. The dots are very integral to this wall. They give an illusion of it being illuminated. It helps this mirage of play and play of light, and that's a really important thing, especially because it's a movie theater. This is the installation of the kinetic sculpture that Milton Glaser has designed. This has been in the, in the makings for over a year. It's made from wonderful materials, 
stainless steel, it's powder coated. And I can't wait till Milton comes by and sees it. Hoping is that in the intersection of that red, the blue, and the green, that something, when it's in motion, something... Something will happen. Mad will happen. You can spin it. <laughs> Joe! The green! Turn the green! We think this could become a neighborhood icon as well as a symbol for the theater. And every hour on the hour, it rotates with a series of bars that produce a rather interesting kinetic effect as they move. And the marquee will say it's one o'clock. Not a very efficient clock, but an amusing one. I like the design. I like the colors. I think it's really beautiful. Maravilloso. I would say of all the things that delight me in my life, that idea of having something in the mind and being able to visualize it and make it tangible is by far the most profound and extraordinary experience. to see an idea become visible. And there's nothing more thrilling. It's always more interesting to do a project that has social or cultural aspiration. That's certainly been true in my life. The range of activities really of interest to me. If it was simply a, a movie palace, it would always be interesting to do, but it wouldn't have the complexity or the diversity that this project has.